Okay, in today's video, I'm going to do some more of these tags, but I'm going to do it fast, fast, fast motion, and I'll do a, a talk over later, but I thought I'd show you the ones that I've done off camera so far, at least where we are. I may add more to them, but even just with just a little focal point, they look super cute. I did add a little uh, thing there. Some, oh, he's got a mushroom umbrella, kind of, sort of. That one lay layered and then put it on there. I started uh, using these, what are they? These that came, probably came in a, um, your creative studio pack is probably where that came from. And that one, it actually comes as a fussy cut all the way around and then I fussy cut it some more and cut the leaves and cut around where the line was just so that I wouldn't cover as much of the background. You can do that, you know. Added some of my faux, faux she tape. Uh, that needs something. I don't know what. And then these ones were in the pile for whatever reason. They go in this pile. All right. So the rest of this will be sped up, voiceovered. And welcome to my channel. This is Darcy's Misadventures with Mixed Media. Hi guys. It's been a couple weeks since I've actually recorded this, but I thought I'd go ahead and do the voiceover so I'd have it to put up when especially if i like have some time where i don't have a lot of videos to put up because this could go up pretty much any time the backgrounds i'm using were masterboard collage papers that i made uh, a little bit ago and i made some uh, tags and journal cards in that video and then i just kept playing and recorded it for you just in case you uh might want some ideas i don't know how many ideas we'll have i don't know i was using um these these little um pieces to just kind of give height uh, when I had like short focal points I wanted to use and of course this one I couldn't it's, it's the greens oh my goodness a video I made earlier today finding a green was so hard and it's it's the greens I'm trying to like not perfectly match but have it at least be not obvious that it doesn't match does that make sense see yeah that one the one with the berries on it is just too blue there's too much blue in that green so that's why I was I was looking for for one that had leaves that had just less less blue in the green, <laughs> I guess. And either one of those, um, the red flower or the pink flower, would have worked. Uh, I have to make sure if I forget to link it, and you want to know the shop where I got these fussy cuts from, uh, just remind me. Say where'd you get all those cute fussy cuts? Uh, like the cat sleeping in the let's see the grist mill the rock wall what else did I get from her um uh some fairy houses the horses a bunch of them came from this one shop and uh so hopefully I'll remember to link her and if I don't let me know and that nesting circle stamp that I love to use is from PM Artist Studio of course you just go to pmartiststudio.com and for stamps and stencils you can use uh, my coupon code uh, was it Darcy Fan 10? It's down in my description box, as is the link for the shop. Yeah, the nesting circle one is one of my favorites, especially over collage, to kind of just bring the papers together as one piece. And then also there's a rose uh, stamp. They're foam stamps. But there's a, it doesn't look like a rose. It's like an abstract rose. And um, it's almost like a fatter nesting circle. And I love those two. Those were created by... Um, the nesting circles were created by, uh, I think, Mariah or Brad and or Brad. But they're the husband and wife team. And the rose one was created by Foral Davies. And she has a channel, Foral Art. And she does a lot of, you know, collage art, you know, that would go on a wall, you know. You know, I love these bunnies. I do have these bunnies in both my shops, uh, Year of the Rabbit they have backgrounds, but you can always cut around the backgrounds. But when I um, license pictures like that, um, I try to do something to them. It, it's not, I don't think it's right. And I don't think you're really supposed to just resell them as is or in a kit. Like you need to change something about them. And plus it just makes it a lot easier to cut them out if you've got a background. And then if you don't want to use a background, you don't have to. You can cut them however you want to. So, yeah, I'm just, I think here in this part of the video, I probably could have skipped this part a little bit because <laughs> I meant to go through and skip, like, the really boring parts. I'm just looking for something. <coughs> Who knows what I'm looking for? 
but maybe I'll find something interesting to say in the meantime. <laughs> yeah, right, like that ever happens. Oh, I just, um, I had gotten these little baby, um, these little tins to put watercolors in. So I'll have to remember to show you. Right now I've got a bunch of, I used, I had my Arteza watercolors and I put them in there. So I've got them with their covers open to dry. And I have a little hack of how to um, uh, get a little, well, I don't have to show you. I could just tell you. They have these little inserts, right? So you just ink the top of the ink insert that has all the, the, um, the different sections and then put that down on the paper. And then you have something to cut out and you have your little sections to be able to write what your paint is. I just wrote the numbers so I would know what to refill them with because I go by more by sight than learning all the colors because that just, I, I'm too old to memorize things. On that paper, I cut out all the little holes that were in the original paper. These papers <coughs> that I have quite a few of are, um, it was a big pack that I got from Jessica Rapp, uh, orange, orange, something about oranges is her shop. <laughs> Robin will know but Jessica Rapp yeah she's got a shop and she has these uh digitals French and um in English like well there's a set of French there's like 700 public domain images in there and she even says that you can use them um in your digitals that you sell so I I like using those because they just are fun to use and I don't have to go finding all the books and I've got them and I appreciate that she allows us to use them in stuff that we use. I appreciate that so much. Oh, this is the rose stamp I was talking about that uh, was created by Froyle Davies. And it's also one of my favorites to use. So I'm not got a little crow happening there. He's just probably from the graphics fairy. I just, so, yeah, where do you guys get uh, your fussy cuts? Uh, for me, a lot a lot comes from dreamstime.com, but that's because, you know, I create digitals, and I want to have more than just public domain images to use. Yeah, lost a foot there. Lost a toe um, in my art, I, you know, because otherwise it's just going to look like everybody else's. And, of course, my favorite style is that watercolor style, like those apple blossoms you see there in the back, on the table. And uh, the bunnies and all the things. I have a nice selection of whale tail tabs from painty papers and gel plate prints and all the things. And so, and I, I sometimes I try to try, sometimes I match them and sometimes I try to be a little clashy. Like uh, the lovely uh, Rachel Roxy Creations. She says clashy, I say unexpected, like, because when she does it, she says clashy, but it always looks good, so it's, it's just unexpected. I know I've said that before. People that have been around for a long time know I've said that before, but for the new people, because there are new people, because my channel is slowly growing, and I so appreciate all my old subscribers, not that you're old in age, you know, the ones that have been here for a while, and the new ones, I appreciate you all so much. Oh, man, that flower, I was determined determined to use that flower I don't I think it's at the end when I finally actually use it for reals and that owl keeps coming up like he wants to be used so bad I don't know why he might be from the watercolor -y type vector vector what sometimes they're watercolor sometimes they're vector oh and when I was doing my watercolors this morning putting them in the little pans oh my poor gamboge it I had got in black around the rim of it and so I didn't realize that, and I'm like, you know, put it, pouring it into the little squares, and I'm like, what in the world? Oh, actually, it's this, maybe it's this next one that I actually end up using the flower, but I don't use that background. I go way off course on that one. Um, let me think. What was I saying? Oh, so now I kind of got, it's a green gold now, because I think I used the gamboge with black to make a green gold at some point, or olive green maybe, because you can do... Depending on how much black and how much yellow, you can use those two to create like army green, khaki green, or even a green gold. Like the more yellow you use, the more green gold you get. <coughs> so yeah, black and yellow can make quite an array of things. I don't even know if I ever even use that mushroom. I'm just all over the place, aren't I? Let's see, can I see what's going to happen in the future? No, I don't know. 
I don't know what I end up doing, but I really like that mushroom on there, and I was determined. I was bound and determined. See, that would have been cute. See, when you look back at the things you try, you're like, that wasn't so bad. Why didn't I choose it? I don't know. I don't know why. I, I don't know why I don't choose things when I could choose things. I need to print out some more clocks and stuff. I like using the clocks. I don't know. You guys remember that journal I made that had the animals and the clocks and wonderfully weird or something it wasn't really that weird but it was it was weird uh, getting off I guess one of my subbies bought that book though and I appreciate her and uh I mean she can say in the comments if she wants to say it was her but you know I, I like to keep that stuff you know person this I don't tell people who bought what unless if they want to say they can but it's not my place to to give up customers names or client names well unless they allow me to like when I made the forest journal I believe Robin allowed me to tell people who that was for that was a long time ago that was the first like really mixed media like that yeah see sometimes it's good to do like a commission or a special um request because it pushes you out of your box and shows you what you can really do and uh, that was one of my favorite books I ever made and then somebody had asked me one time if I could um, do some ephemera for a journal they were making, which was for, um, oh, uh, the bunnies, the war, the bunnies, uh, Watership Down. She was doing a Watership Down journal. And I actually kind of had fun. I kind of, I had never read the book, never saw the movie. I wasn't traumatized like my cousin. And so I looked up, you know, kind of a synopsis of the book and found some things, you know, found some owls to add to it and some bunnies and and uh, a seagull and a mouse and just looked at, looked for all the characters that were in the book to really round out the ephemera and, pro you know, gave her more than she asked for. But it, it was fun to do the research and do that. Now, it does stress me out to do special orders, but that doesn't mean I won't do them. I just usually I'm like... Let me do it, and then you decide if you still want it. <laughs> I'm not, you know, like most people are like, you have to pay in advance, but that would stress me out so bad because then I'd be like, well, what if they paid and then they don't like it? And so, you know, I do it the other way because I figure if they don't like it, somebody will. So, you know, it'll sell somewhere. I'm, I think I was trying trying to use up some of those big stamp things too. That's that was going to bring in some color in the top to help the. Uh, I liked the color, but it didn't. The flower didn't work. This mushroom, oh, stop with the mushroom lady. I should have cut the, some, I got way too much about that mushroom happening. I was, like I said, I was bound and determined. I like a circle in the background. I, I'm thinking, what am I thinking? I don't know. I don't remember. Did I ink it? I don't know. Did I get a smaller circle? I don't know. I'm looking at the future pictures. I look, this is my box of my Foshi tape, my decorative tape. Um, that I try to bring out and use from time to time. Oh, I think I actually did use that piece. Because I needed him to stand out more. Because the music was not quite doing it. And this is a clear piece of... Um, it's clear. The It was painted on clear. So some of the music will show through a little bit. But then we've got a background for the mushroom to stand out against. Okay. And that's why... That's why I was, guess that's what I was looking for. I'm not going to say it was the perfect thing to do, but I wanted it to stand out. And that's why I did it. And still have some of the background showing. I think it works. And now we have to figure out if we want to label on it or not. Because why stop it? Just a mushroom. You can. You can just put a focal point on there and be done. You don't have to do all the words and the labels and all the things, but you can. Do what works for you, do what makes you happy. Do what is pleasing to your eye. That's that's what the important thing is. Oh, I think I thought about, oh, I have other ideas. I don't know what I actually end up doing. There, there's the, the chipmunk that goes with everything is going to be coming out. I kind of wish I had put him on top. He was kind of cute, but it was the tag wasn't quite tall enough. But this little chipmunk, I mean, he just goes with everything. He could go on all the cards all the time, and he's just perfect he's from dreamstime.com he's like that watercolory kind of effect kind of a cute little chipmunk and then I think I turned this into a tag and I used that label to get the angle for that tag corner so they would kind of like line up a little bit 
So finally, the mushrooms finally got used. Oh my goodness. I hope everybody is doing well. Um, you know, I love to hear what you're working on. Uh, what's, what's making you happy these days? I can tell you what's making me happy today. This is the first time in a long time that it's been in the 70s. I think it's a high of 77 today. Sunny, breezy, not humid. I'm just like so excited about the weather today. My windows are open. Got the windows in my dad's room open, my son's room open, my room, my other son um, who is home. Like it's just me and my younger son are home right now. My dad comes back on Wednesday from his summer in Maine. I'm very excited to have him home again. This is his home, his address, all those things come here. And um, and he's looking forward to coming back too. So, oh, I hem and haw about this tag too. I I don't know why I thought you guys would be interested in this. It's It's got to be so boring. <laughs> I sped it up, but at least you can see things don't always come super easy. They They don't just come together like that. It takes me some time sometimes. I wish that I could... You know, I wish I was not an overthinker, but I'm so an overthinker. Are you an overthinker? Raise your hand if you're an overthinker. Especially when it comes to just a tag, which someone's going to look at for a minute. Maybe right on the back of it, it's going to sit in a journal. But I have to think about it and hem and haw about it for who knows how long. Sometimes I come back, go back and forth with pieces until I finally get what I want. Does this end up? Oh, actually, this one does end up on the tag. Oh, phew wasn't sure I remember that tag I love that that um gel plate that gel plate print in the back um I think that the turquoise that you see is probably ink and the rest is paint but I really like that like burgundy dark burgundy with like some aqua or turquoise and um or like some green gold like those colors together I love in fact, you could add some green gold to with the turquoise. I'd be all all about that. Those would be fall co colors to me. Even though they're not fall leaves, they're rich, deep, uh, you know, just more dark colors. In fact, like, if you're looking, like, for your seasonal wardrobe, those would be considered fall colors, I think. Like, like an eggplant in the burgundy, um, in the, the deep olive green stuff like that maybe the turquoise and then you brighten it up with turquoise or green gold you know stuff like that oh i finally am using a piece of scrap from a book spine that's what that's from you save them and you think you're going to use them and then you forget about them even though you got them sitting probably in a bowl right next to your desk to help you remember to use them but you never remember i finally used one just add a little bit of texture to that tag I love gristmills, if you didn't know. That's when I found these. I was like, woohoo, gristmills, yay! And watercolor, watercolor gristmills, I'm all over that. That makes me happy. So, so yeah. I think part of the reason I really like gristmills is when we were little, my grandparents would take us to um, Jenny's gristmill in Plymouth. And back then, you didn't get, there were no signs. So, we fed bread to the ducks, poor ducks. We would have fed them better things if we knew. You, when you know better, you do better. But we didn't know better, so we didn't do better. But we always enjoyed the time with our grandparents, you know. And sometimes it would be my brother and I. Sometimes it might be my cousin and I or all three of us. Uh, my cousin was uh, five years younger than me. She's adorable. She's still adorable. Blonde hair, blue eyes. I mean, what's not to love? She's our little bicentennial baby. And she's got two adorable kids, too. So, yeah, on my mom's side of the family, she had nine siblings. <laughs> so I have a lot of cousins over there. But on my dad's side of the family, even though he has three siblings, um, I only have three cousins. Because <laughs> his brother had two boys, and his sister, the older of the two sisters, had one girl, and then... My youngest aunt, who's only two years older than me, she has dogs. <laughs> and that's how she wants it. And I, I, that's good. If that's what ha makes you happy, then that's what you do. I don't think that, that people should be pressured to have children. Just, it doesn't have to be the expected norm. It's not for everybody. So, I mean, I don't regret it for one minute. And... 
you know, my aunt, my aunt's not losing that quality of life just because she doesn't have children. She has great quality of life. She travels. She is doing, working in a job she loves and able to do a second, you know, she's just, she's living her best life and I love it for her. So, so, you know, whatever your life choices are, they're your choices and I hope they're good choices. As long as you're not hurting anyone or breaking any laws, do what makes you happy. That's my opinion. That's totes my opinion. I'm just determined to use that. What is that? Uh, uh, what are those? Hydrangea. I think it's a hydrangea. It's also a watercolory effect. Oh, and then here's another thing. I got this idea from somebody on... Somebody had used uh, these little fussy cuts that I have, the Year of the Rabbit, and they had cut part of it. And you see what a difference that makes? Because now he pops against that uh, hydrangea, but then I still have, you know, the the uh, stamps on the other side, which are kind of a similar, like, color. So you could cut the rabbit out all the way, cut them out part way, not just the rabbits, any anything that you have from any kit or whatever. Someday I'm going to have some easy fussy cuts in the shop for you. And I'll even add like the backgrounds. I have some, there's too many ideas and too many things started and nothing finished. I'm not, I've not been diagnosed with ADD, but, um, sometimes I think, I know I'm neurodivergent in some, in some form of way because my love of small spoons exceeds a normal human being. <laughs> All right, this tag was kind of getting on my nerves just because of that thin stripe. No, it wasn't this one. It was, a, it was the one I did before. But the thin stripe down the middle, the way it was working. What do I end up doing with this one? See, it's been so long, I don't even know what I did. See, that's an easy fussy cut. But if you wanted to, the, the you don't know what I'm talking about. The flower that was, the rose that was on the um the music. Like, you could cut the easiest part of the rose out and then tear from there and then... You don't have to cut around the leaves and stuff. Maybe I'll print some and show you how. Maybe once I get them in the store. The, that bunny's in the store. They are. They're the year of the rabbit. Those those cute rabbits. They only get sold because... Because uh, every time that Gail uses them, she does mention where she gets them from. Gail Gustinelli. How many shops have I mentioned? Oh my goodness, I went back and watched Gail's very first video today. And from day one, she was supporting other YouTubers. I mean... That's just her. That's her heart. That's just who she is. She's not being fake when she's like supporting Etsy shops and YouTube uh, creators and just other creators. She's not fake about that. She's been like that from day one. And that's why everyone loves her so much. That's why she's got the 65,000 subscribers. And if you haven't subscribed to her, go do it. Same with PM Artist Studio. They're almost to 7,000. Let's let's help get them to 7,000. If you don't know who PM Artist Studio is, you haven't been around here very long. <laughs> they are a great mother-daughter duo that do live streams four times a week. Mariah does one of them. And um, you get to see their faces and the table that Patricia when she's gel printing. Um, oh, she's making some really cool uh, little journals with interesting pockets and cuts and all that and yeah you might want to go check that out uh and then mariah plays with inks i call her a mother inker she likes that one <laughs> some people uh so ink slayer i think was one uh ink queen or spray queen i don't know we like mother inker because she she um she, she likes sugar biscuits quite a bit <laughs> she's Anyway, sugar biscuits is, you know, are they're a term for, I mean, trying not to say swear words. So, look at that. We got a coffee cup happening on there. So now that big blue line down the middle is less obvious. But then we get the blue butterfly to bring in some, or the butterfly has some blue in it. Where did, oh, I lost the butterfly. I do remember that. I remember I cut out the butterfly, I inked the butterfly, and then I lost the butterfly. <laughs> Uh, he's upside down somewhere. If it's upside down, it becomes invisible. I'm just, that's how, that's just the way it is. Some things will never change. That him? That's him. Told you he was upside down. Upside down and under stuff. I, I throw things. It's a terrible, terrible habit. But see, I, 
see, I kind of used that other tag to make my cut so that it would be, it's, I think it's just a little more pleasing to the eye that way than if it was at a different angle, then, um, then Carrie would stop watching me. Who is Carrie? Carrie the Crafter. I'm just full of other channels for you to go check out today. He, um, he's pretty great. He mentions me on his channel sometimes too. And, uh, I enjoy watching him. He enjoys watching me. We sometimes chat in the, uh, chats on the live streams that Pam Artist Studio does. And, uh, I know that there's at least one person in, in the world that has their coffee with my videos in the morning. And I like to have my coffee and my breakfast with Gail Augustinelli in the morning. That's my, my, uh, uh, what's the word I want? Somebody's already said it. They've yelled it. I didn't hear you. Yell it louder. <laughs> Ritual, routine, that kind of a word. Oh, there's uh, one of the rose stamps. That's the larger one. Just adding it. Just if you kind of cross over your, uh, and then there's a smaller one. So I'm just kind of like, I think I use coffee or I don't know, something just to make it in the background, but also bring together. I know I've said it. I say it a million times. I like to use stamps to cohesify the collage to make it look like it was one piece meant to be one piece i had another um label i was going to put on that one but then i found that butterfly and i was like oh yeah that's way better and i like this little tool i just wish it made more it, that's the biggest the biggest angle it makes i wish it made a little bigger angle i'd rather have one that just does one or two angles so that I could have the bigger angle but I do like like the little it has a little tiny angle which is nice when you're doing the four corners so who knows what I end up with on this one I go back and forth and forth and back oh do I use the one I might even bring back in the coffee bring in the uh the little yep he's got a little coffee cup in his hand do I use him I don't know he sits on there for a while I don't know what I use I'm bringing some things to try because he kind of blends into that background. So I want him to pop a little more. So I'm looking for something that will help him to pop a little bit. In case you're wondering why I'm hemming and hawing and not making a decision. That is, see the, a lot of those that you see me going through right there were from Jessica Rapp's um, 700 digitals. And she didn't do anything special to them. All she did was scan. I, I mean, and that's a lot right there. I mean. Scanning takes energy and whatnot <clears throat> and time. Oh, my goodness, so much time just to scan stuff. So I appreciate Jessica for doing all that scanning so that I could have things to play with. And some of them I printed out the regular size. Some I printed out smaller. Oh, and another place that I look for for digitals is New York Public Library public domain images. Um, a lot of them need to be cleaned up or or cut or whatever but there's a lot there um including some like handwriting and stuff like that and I don't know in the very first digital that I made which is an uh, autumnal something I don't know someone with the forest animals and in a jelly plate print that I had created it um it had something from the public domain and it had like a seal and a me medallion or metal type thing on the paper and that was kind of fun to use and I had used some other things from the public domain, plus some of the animals, watercolor type animals that I got off of Dreams Time. That was my very first kit, digital kit that I made. It's in both my shops. It should be less in <clears throat> at on Kofi. Both are are linked below. I'm not good at using my own digitals, <laughs> except for like, uh, you know. Although you see that little llama down there in the left hand corner. There's also a digital with him in it. It's blue and yellow. But I can do a different color with, with those animals. Like, Well, actually, there's some fussy cuts that are not part of the kit. They're just easy fussy cuts. Um, it's called Mariah and Friends because there's a little cat with a slouchy hat and a lollipop. And um, Mariah is part of the PM Artist Studio I talked about earlier. And I've little, le legit, I think I've seen her in a slouchy hat and a lollipop. So when I saw that cat, <laughs> I was like, that's Mariah. See that heart? <sighs> I don't, I don't, I'm not, I like hearts, but they're not going to be my first choice usually. So look at all these layering bits I have, all these layering bit options. Some are ones I've printed, some are ones from your creative studio, some are from Tim Holtz. 
um, in summer from, oh, it was a, a boho, there was a, a, an Etsy shop that I got some things from, and that's where, uh, some of the things are from. Oh, and then, like, those, uh, those dark labels are from Tina, Shabby Dabby Doo Da. That's one of my favorite kit is, uh, one favorite thing she sells are those the really deep dark labels that are all grungy looking like that and it looks similar to the uh what's already behind there but <laughs> apparently I thought it worked because I don't I think I actually choose that do I choose that I might oh look I'm gluing it on we're making decisions things are happening finally oh my god so this video is just to make you feel better about overthinking the things you're doing and taking forever to make decisions <laughs> like I'm doing because sometimes you see me and I'm like oh this 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 here, it's done but other times you'll notice it's this 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 maybe this maybe that hmm that needs one more thing on it because his arm yeah see where I just pointed that's gonna bug me so I'd probably find a little label or something just to cover up that cut off elbow so it doesn't look like he's floating and doesn't have a body nope already got a number on there lady I mean, not that a number is bad. See, uh, some of Tracy's labels I printed out on other um, backgrounds. So, like, some of them I printed on dark paper or other... cut. Like, I have some that I printed on, like, a dark blue paper or an aqua paper. And I have some that I printed on some of my digitals, which are actually free ones that are in Miss, in my Facebook group. I don't know if I ever put them on Kofi or not. There's a couple of free items in Kofi. There's some label, uh, not labels, there's some tags and some other things. Oh, yay, I'm finally done. <laughs> I can stop talking now. I hope you all have a delightful day and I hope you enjoyed this video. Love you guys.